through day. I've been up since 5.30 this morning. I just dropped Michael off. It is almost 7 o'clock, 6.52. And Michael is building a commercial building down here. And I'm gonna be heading home. So I will see you guys there. Hey guys, I'm getting ready to head out again. Um, so I just stopped home, I grabbed some water, finished getting ready this morning, and now I've gotta head out. I gotta take the truck into the shop. Um, we have a few things that we have to do on it. It kind of, you know how it just like hits all at once, like a whole bunch of things with your vehicle just kind of hits and it, it's it's gonna be expensive, so I gotta do it in stages. So we already had the brakes done, the radiator and the ball joint on the right side is gonna get done today. Oh, and we already had the ball joint done on the left side too, on the driver's side, because Michael was driving about a week and a half ago. So you know, driving along, this is, the, this is the tire. So I was driving along, front driver's side tire, and all of a sudden the ball joint snaps. Well, I don't know the terminology, but you know, it, basically the tire was like this, and then all of a sudden, oh, it was like that, and he was skidding, um, going down the road about 75 feet. So uh, yeah, the tire just like was laying on the road, sliding on the side. <laughs> it was not good. So we got that taken care of about a week and a half ago. This time it's gonna be the bright side. So we had to do it in stages because it's ah, it's pretty pricey, but you know it stings. But then again, the vehicle's already paid off. I paid it off quite a while ago, um, you know, quite a few years ago. I bought it in 2005, new. It's a Toyota Tundra. I love it. I'm not complaining at all. It just stings a little, you know, when everything kind of hits all at once, you know, or all back to back. So after this, the struts and shocks have to get done. So anyway, I'm trying to get, get everything done as quickly as possible on it. Oh, and I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit off. I've been sick and so I'm just, I'm getting better now, but my voice is just still like a little, you know, a little gravelly. But um, uh, I gotta put my chapstick on because my lips have been like really dry since I've been sick too, especially because it's winter, it's the desert. I love the desert, but it's dry as heck here, which that's part of why I like it, but and you just have to take extra care, especially when you're sick. Oh my gosh. And, and during winter time, right around the nose, because you know, I've got, well, you can't see this, but right where I was getting ready here, I've got a pile of tissues here. Yes, I've been blowing my nose a lot lately. You can see it's all red. So I've been using this, um, what is this? Uh, Luxme Pure Nol Nolotica? Nilotica melt. Anyway, it's like shea butter, right? So I just have been using that on my nose and it really does amazing, an amazing job healing like that red, like when you get really dried out and cracked from blowing your nose too much. So it's kind of like putting chapstick on your nose too. So I put my chapstick on and then this is chapstick for my nose. <laughs> okay. Um, we have got to head out right now because I got to get the truck in. It's got to get done before Michael is off work. So that's our mission today. And um, hopefully they have a shuttle back. Otherwise, oops, I will either be uh, walking home or taking an Uber. So, okay, come along. Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful day though. Oh my goodness. Uber home. Man, that is just so handy, isn't it? Okay, so the truck is gonna be in the shop all day, and my plan is to be filming a clean with me video with you guys all day today until the truck is done. So we've got a lot to do. Um, I'm still bundled up because it was 30, like 36 degrees out this morning, so very chilly, but beautiful, sunny, clear, like crystal clear out. So it's I love those days. Like clear days are my absolute favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little laundry going before I start on anything else, but I think we're gonna, well, right after I eat, I'll make something really quick, maybe a smoothie or something, and then we'll start on the kitchen because that is a disaster right now. And these little wool light bags are so handy for delegates too, so I love those. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put away all of our wash and dry dishes. And I'm probably going to be organizing our cupboards sometime, but not today. I don't think we're going to have time for that today. Uh, we don't have a, a dishwasher. I just wash everything by hand, so I've just got that. So I'm going to wash the dishes, but first I'm going to make a quick smoothie because you got to get some food in you, in your system, before you start working for the day. So 
Let me just move that out of the way temporarily. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick green smoothie and I had some strawberries too, so you know what? I'm gonna make this a clean with me and a what I eat in the day when, when I'm sick. Or, well, I guess I would eat this like any time, but yeah, today, being sick, this is what I'm having. So I had a bowl of strawberries this morning and now I'm gonna make my green smoothie. So I made cucumber noodles because I make uh, Swiss chard wraps, which I'll make one later today, but I'm using the core in my smoothie and sometimes I'll take a pinch of like, you know, a little bit of the skin part I, I like the green skin of the cucumber. Even though it's like really rough and fibrous, it's, uh, you know, that's like a healthy part for you. Okay, I've got one handful of dandelion greens. I'll rinse those. Cut those down. Throw that in there. One of my favorite things to put in a green smoothie is broccoli. I know it, it seems weird, right? But broccoli is one of the healthiest foods that we can eat. It's so good for you. And also, if you like, if you don't like the taste of it, especially, it depends on how you cook it, right? Like steamed, eh, not so much. Like, like it's not one of my favorite things. But stir fry, yes. Green smoothies, yes. And the trick with green smoothies is don't add too much. You know, like one cup or you know approximately so i'm adding like about that much so basically one handful of broccoli is perfect also i will sometimes add a little bit of ginger just like one little slice where you can't even really taste it you know because i don't like the, the spiciness of it but um that's really good to add into your green smoothie or fennel both of those are really good for your digestive system so i just add a small handful of the fennel just a couple slices of it my favorite part is not actually the bulb though, it's the, the green stalks on it and all the, the leafy, um, it's almost like a fern kind of thing, almost like dill. So I like to add that part, it just tastes like even more fresh. Frozen bananas. These bananas are a little smaller so I'm going to add two of them. I have these in plastic bags but you know what, I was thinking of getting a larger uh, kind of like Tupperware container to be able to store my bananas so I don't have to use these bags. I really want to, I want to get away from using Ziploc bags. A little bit of water. So green smoothies are a great way to get a whole bunch of nutrients packed into your body in a very short amount of time. And it's just so fast and easy. And I do drink the entire blender full, so that's about two 16 ounce servings. So 32 ounces of green smoothie every morning. I mean, unless Michael is here, I would share it with him if he was here, but if it's just me on my own, I do drink the whole thing. So when I'm cleaning the kitchen, I like to break it up into sections. So instead of like being overwhelmed with the entire kitchen, I just break it up by countertop. So I'm gonna clean this stretch first. So we're gonna do all the dishes, have those dry and clean all the countertop. And then I will move on to the stove section. Grabbing my vinegar. Um, this is a solution of vinegar and water. It's just so inexpensive and handy and it cleans all kinds of things. So I just spray my vinegar and water mixture and wipe this down. That already looks so much better. Just to have one clean, empty space can just really motivate you to get everything else really clean, you know? Okay, so let's get the dish towel down here. Okay, now we're onto the dishes. So I'm putting on my gloves because I want to protect my nails and my hands. And I'm going to get all of this done and yes, all the way to here. So actually all of this <laughs> has to get done. So let's go ahead and get started and try to get this done as quick as possible. These palm heart jars, we get these at Costco. I save these jars and that's what we use for our smoothies. It's really easy to get the label off too, so I just soak them. In fact, I'll add a little more water there. And I'll just let that soak and that label will come right off on its own in a little bit. Then the VitaJewel water bottles, you just unscrew the top and bottom. And you gotta remove the gems too, so that just screws out of the bottom. All right, dishes are all done. Now I'm gonna clean the sink, so I just use a little barkeeper's friend in there. A 
All right, much better. Okay, let me put the stove back down here. Okay, I'm gonna do a speed cleaning on the stove top. I'm just removing the grease there. Oh, you know what, let me move the caps too. So I just take half a lemon and I rub it all over the stove. And that juice is gonna help break up any greasy, grimy bits. Although we don't, um, like since we don't cook meat on our stove or we don't cook like greasy stuff at all, um, we don't really have a lot of grease action happening up here, which is nice when it comes to cleaning inside your oven or out on top there. Everything just wipes away pretty easily. I've got one spot here that I'm gonna add a little barkeeper's friend to. Let's see if that'll take it up. Oh yeah, that stuff is just amazing. So I like the lemon and the sponge method if you're just doing like a quick speed cleaning on the stove top and especially it's really easy if you clean it after every use. It just makes, you know, it never gets caked on or greased up or anything when you keep it clean every single time. But if you do have, you know, some caked on grease or something, Barkeeper's Friend also works really good on that. Although, always check, um, you know, do a little spot test, whatever surface you're going to use this on, because it can etch yeah, delicate surfaces, it says. So up here I use vinegar because it's really delicate. It easily gets scratched up here. So just make sure whatever sponge I'm using is soft and gentle. Use a little vinegar or lemon. I'll go over it once with my vinegar. So that's just to rinse away any residue left over from the barkeeper's friend. Now we're gonna clean this side, but let me gather up this fruit. And I know that there are plastic water bottles, gallon jugs right here. These are Michael's, so don't come for me. I, I know, I don't buy uh, plastic water bottles, but he likes Crystal Geyser. Okay, we're just gonna wipe down this Vitamix. So let me put that back over here. And I'll move Michael's waters just until we wipe that down. Spray that down with our vinegar. Day back over there. Okay, I'm about to do another little laundry, but I just noticed right along the edge here that there's a little bit of, I don't know, sand or something maybe from Michael's stuff. So let's get this. And then right in here. Okay, so let's get all the towels in here. Okay, I'm gonna grab a quick snack here. What should we have? Pear, apple, let's do an apple. Those days when you're just too busy to spend time in the kitchen cooking or making food, I love fast food and this is like a perfect fast food. Just grabbing a piece of fruit and it's just easy, quick, and then you're off and back to work. So for any glass surfaces like our dining table or our coffee table or any delicate surfaces, I always use a microfiber cloth and our vinegar and water mixture. So I just need to spray down our dining table here. So I was just about to make lunch and they finished the truck so I gotta go out right now and go pick it up. Right now I am just having my B12. So that's lunch <laughs> for a minute here. I gotta go out, um, go get the truck and then I will eat when we come back. It's definitely too warm out here for my fur boots now. It's 71 degrees. Alright guys, I'm just picking up my truck at Dirty Tea. There they are, the guys who really hook us up. Definitely recommend them. Hey ready to go. I'm so stoked that we got that taken care of. There's one more thing on our list. We got to get the shocks and struts done. Anyway, so that worked out really good. That worked out super smoothly. They took care of Michael when he had his ball joint. If you guys are looking for a good automotive service, Dirty Tees, they're on Oracle. They've been really good.
Okay, we just got home, Michael's home. So the dishes are dry, I'm gonna put those away and then we're gonna make a smoothie because Michael is hungry and then we're probably gonna do wraps. Okay, so let me get all the dishes put away and then we'll make a creamsicle smoothie. So I'm gonna throw in two oranges and then peaches. I just kind of eyeball it, so maybe like a cup to two cups, depending on how peachy you want it. So I call this a orange creamsicle, but this is really good, especially during winter time if you're fighting off, you know, being sick because it's super packed full of bioflavonoids and vitamin C. Um, Costco has been out of their frozen peaches, but I got these from Walmart and they're a pretty fair price. I mean, they're the, the least expensive that I was able to find and they're pretty good. And then we'll do two bananas. And Michael and I are going to be sharing this, so if it was just you and you didn't want like a giant wonderful, then you can half this and it'll be just a single serve. And then a little bit of lacuma powder, which gives it kind of a little bit of a malty flavor. Just a little, little dash of vanilla. So we're not doing ice in here because everything's already pretty icy. Just enough water to blend it. So you could actually do this and only have a little bit of water in there and really make it thick and then it's more like a orange creamsicle ice cream or like a soft serve kind of. It's kind of like an orange Julius. Are you ready for a smoothie? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're gonna make Swiss chard wraps. It's really fast and easy to prep, so I'm just gonna get everything out, get it all chopped up, and then I'll bring you guys back and show you as we're actually making them. Okay, now for our Swiss chard leaves. Just gonna trim off that handle there. And just skim off the extra bulk of the, what do you call that, that center vein. So that just makes it more flexible so we can turn it into a wrap or it could be a taco. That one's already really flexible. I like the younger leaves because they're more tender, but normally you see them in the grocery stores, they're a little bigger, you know. So I use our Titan Julienne peeler to peel cucumber noodles. So I just take a pinch of the cucumber, just stuff that into the middle, and then we'll do red beet. The more color I can fit in my wraps, the better. So I like to make these kind of like a rainbow wrap. And then we've gotta have red cabbage in there. Let's do some palm hearts. We get these normally at Costco in the big jar, but they also sell them at Trader Joe's and mm, I think they have them, yeah, they got them at Sprouts. They've got them all over, you just gotta look for them. So they have them canned or jarred. And then for sure, our plant fat. Love avocado. So I'll use a whole quarter. Sometimes I'll even fit a half of avocado in here and make a like an extra fat one. What the heck? Let's just go ahead and go all out and do a whole half avocado. Cilantro, yes. I guess people either love or hate cilantro. What what team are you guys on? I love cilantro. I just can't get enough of it. I love it on all of my Mexican food. Like as the more the better. So once you've got your wrap stuffed. This one is huge, oh my gosh. We're gonna just try to get a grip on it. And... Okay, and you can leave it whole like that, like a little burrito, or you can slice it. I like to slice mine diagonally. And then I open it up. You guys, these are so good. 
And so good for you too. Okay, now I gotta make Michaels. That's really good. Okay, second round of doing dishes. I'm just finishing up. Michael made some rice, and so you can see the bottom of the pot. It's got, you know, like the burn kind of look to it. So we're gonna fix that up right now, really quick. So I just take Barkeeper's Friend, pour a little of that in there. Just give that a good scrub. So just add a little more as you go, and it cleans right up. If you have a sponge with a little more abrasive side, like I'm just using my dish rag and it's pretty soft, it's not very abrasive at all. But if you have a sponge, that really helps. And just use the abrasive side and it cleans it right up super fast. Look at that, all that burnishing on the bottom, all gone. Nice and shiny, perfect. Okay, so I'm just degreasing the stovetop grates and usually what I'll do is I'll take either baking soda and make a paste with it with a little bit of water or take Barkeeper's Friend. And since I'm out of baking soda, I'm just using my Barkeeper's Friend. And so I'll just make a paste and you can pour that directly into a sponge or into your hand, get, a, get it wet a little. And then I'll just kind of spread that around and just create a paste all over. Okay, so once I got the paste all over, I will just let that sit for about 10 minutes because these aren't too bad. If it was worse, you know, if there was more caked on grease, then just let it sit for longer. So while those are sitting in their degreaser paste, I'm gonna start on the caps. So I'm just making a paste on those two because those are a little sticky. Okay, so those will sit and then I'll be back and we'll rinse them. Okay, I think these should be done. Now what I'm gonna do is take my steamer. So I love my steamer for all kinds of things, but it really helps to lift up any residue and it just kind of loosens it up so it's easier to wipe away with your sponge or your scrub brush. Oh yeah, that's way better already. So I'll finish up the grates and I do the same exact thing with the caps too. Okay, let's get the lights back on here. Nice and clean. Okay, this is Michael's laundry. He did a load, and I'm going to just fold this up and put it away. Put the rack back in the laundry room. We're gonna do a little speed cleaning in the living room. It shouldn't take too long, but what I like to do if you're trying to downsize or reduce clutter in your house or in your life, what I like to do is pick one room in your house and tackle that, get it really clean, and then keep it that way, where nothing ever gets a chance to build up in that room again. So if something gets left out in that room, it gets put away right away. So either by you or whoever you know left it there. So it has to move back out of that room. So that's the rule that I've been using for the living room. And then it slowly spreads into the rest of the house, one room at a time. And it just, it's a habit that you're building. So they say it takes 21 days to build a habit, you know, about three weeks. So in our household, the living room is where I started that. And it actually does work. It spreads into the other rooms of the house. So it spread into our dining room first, then into our bedroom. I was able to minimize that. You know how the creep of stuff can happen? you can do the reverse too. You can reverse creep stuff out of your life. And so then you can become clutter free slowly over time more and more. It just is so worth it because you feel so uplifted and you feel that freedom. It just feels so good. It's worth the time and effort to get yourself a system and the strategy in place 
so you have the plan and you know exactly what to do. Now, there is clutter that gets left out here that I have to put away every day, and I'm working on that strategy with Michael. So, because it's his stuff, he leaves it out, and I'm always the one putting it away. So, we have to inspire the other people in our household to want to do it. We can't tell them and try to make them, you know, clean up after themselves. They gotta wanna. So I'm just using my microfiber cloth and, oops, you know what? I just turned on my light. Okay, so this is a Vitruvi essential oil diffuser. I love this. It is gorgeous. It's like a stone, you know, made out of like a, a porcelain stone or something. It's like a matte textured finish. It's gorgeous. I have sweet orange in here and a little bit of grapefruit mixed in. So I use my microfiber cloth on most surfaces that are delicate or like I said earlier, the glass. And this is one of those delicate surfaces it would scratch if I was to use a paper towel. So let's put this back up here. And then right back here, this closet. This is an extra storage closet. Um, I had taken these doors off quite a while back and I, let, I just left the shelves exposed. But they're always so dark and they just really weren't that usable for us. Like we weren't really doing much with them, you know, there's just some items sitting in there and it just didn't, you know, it just made it look more cluttered. So I wanted to, to give this space a cleaner look and putting the doors back on just made it whiter and brighter in here. And so that's what we were trying to do is create more white. And Michael loves white too. So I'm like, okay, let me get those doors back out, put them on, see how they look. So it really brightened up this space back here instead of having it be so dark. I know you could put lights in there too. I mean, there's no plugs or anything, but you could figure out a way to get some, some kind of lighting in there if you really wanted. But I just wanted to put the doors back on there and keep it really simple. So now instead we'll just use it as storage and it's going to be like Michael's storage for his pillows and throws. He likes to have a lot of throws and stuff, so that's what this, this whole basket is full of. So that is sort of going to be his little cozy stash of, you know, extra pillows and stuff when he's, you know, relaxing on the couch or whatever in the evening. So um, who knows, maybe I could have like, I might have a couple extra little baskets in there that he can put his wires and stuff in. That way he can just come to his closet, you know, grab his stuff. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But I, I'm wondering if I should put our electric heater in there too, maybe, because we've got a big floor space down here too, so I might do that. That might be a good place for that when, when it's not in use. You know, I'm gonna move this ladder out because that is left over from when I was putting the doors on. This is a little electric fireplace heater by Crane. I got this on Amazon. We love it. It's amazing. It's going to live down here, I think. I'm going to give it a quick sweep back here. Towels are done. Beautiful, lovely, fluffy white towels. Okay, I'll go fold these. We're ending the night with grocery shopping. I'm gonna get some avocados. Look at these beautiful avocados. Oh my gosh, they are huge. And then I'm gonna get greens. Greens for juicing, greens for smoothies, wraps. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video and I will see you tomorrow because by the time you see this video, I'm gonna be working on the next one. So I'll see you soon.